Are there, are, there, are there general precautions you should take as you go into a raw food diet, things you really need to worry about? Can you do it wrong? I think that people need to make sure they're getting enough protein, that they're not um, you know, being fanatical and leaving out a big portion of food. I think people need to educate themselves and if they're unsure to you know, consult with someone, you know, read some books, take some workshops. Um, so, sure, people can get fanatical about anything and um, you know, I've certainly heard of people that you know, live on juice or live on air, but that's not something everyone's going to be uh, evolved enough to do at you know, this very moment. So, you know, people can do too much of anything or too little of anything. You can overdo oxygen and water or if you don't know what you're doing. So. Is that the ideal? Is to, would that be the ultimate, is to be a breatharian and to not be eating anything? Well, my feeling is that, you know, on this planet, it's nice to enjoy life and our Creator's given us all these wonderful things to enjoy. And um, I think there'll be stages in our universal ascension career that we don't have sex and don't have great food. So why not enjoy it now because those are pleasures given to us. But I, certainly uh, I believe that there's people who who can achieve that and don't need um, sustenance from the material plane, but I'm not one to give advice on that. When you are eating, is the mono diet, in the raw food perspective, the, uh, the best eating diet? I have friends who do that, a mono diet, mm -hmm. but again, right now I'm having so much fun turning people onto this, and I'm going to have a lot better luck turning them on to raw Thai food and, uh, you know, Chinese food than uh, slicing up an apple and saying, here, welcome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to make it fun. And, uh, and, you know, maybe at some point that's w how it will happen for me. But uh, the stage I'm at right now is to have fun and make it delicious and turn everybody on. Do you miss cooked food at all? Uh, you know, I have sometimes gone through things like, oh, I love Indian food. But just a couple of weeks ago, I made this Indian masala with spinach and the dehydrator, and it was so good. And so if I were to hold that up to the, the cooked dish that I thought I missed, I think there's a way to do all of that, you know, at least an octave better or an octave higher. Uh -huh. um, probably the hardest thing for me to give up were potato chips, but you know, what am I missing? They're not really good for anybody anyways. And I know there's all these like, oh, with blue corn and, you know, Celtic salt and cooked in olive oil, um, you know, all these things you can get seduced in. But I really don't think my health is going to suffer now that I have foregone potato chips. And uh, I've even found sort of a, an alternative for popcorn. Uh, I asked Giuliano about this. I said, what do you have for popcorn? Uh, women before their menstrual cycle want some kind of like salty snack. And he said, oh, that's easy. Just marinate cauliflower in a little olive oil, add some Celtic salt, and dehydrate it. And so what? If you eat a whole head of cauliflower, you're none the worse for it. Marinate the cauliflower? Is that is that heating it somehow? No, just kind of chop oh, it up and stir it, toss it, let it sit for a few minutes. Marinade with... means kind of like just to let it soak in something mm -hmm. almost. Oh, yeah. oh. That sounds wonderful. Yes, and the alternative to chocolate, I learned this from David Wolf, was to soak a raw, uh, not soak, stuff a raw pitted date with some either raw almond butter or raw tahini. Because everyone that I know says, oh, chocolate, I couldn't give up chocolate. But with the, cho with the date and the almond butter, you're getting sweet and fat, but it's full and it's nourishing. And tahini is a great source of calcium. And, you know, almond butter is high in zinc and calcium and protein. So... All I can say is, I don't feel deprived at all. I feel ecstatic. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me for jumping around, but back to the herbs a little bit. Don't you you teach or you you do herb walks or something? Yes. Where you go out and teach people about what's available wild t that they could forage, right? Yes. Um, I have done that for a number of years, and actually many years ago, I lived in a teepee in the Ozarks and ate nothing but wild edible plants. Wow. Um, I've always thought I'd be a good contestant on Survivor because I yes. really know about wild plants and I love eating wild plants, and that fits in really well to the raw diet, you know, to include, uh, you know, common weeds like lamb's quarter. I mean, yes, I could buy spinach at the store, but if I have wild lamb's quarter coming up in my yard offering itself free and available and picked uh, three minutes before dinner time that's really special 
And I love to be an advocate for the weeds because herbicides don't make a lot of sense environmentally. And to turn people on to, you can eat the weeds, the dandelion greens and the malva and the violet leaves, and they are unhybridized, ungenetically modified, they're fresh, they're free, and are they ever amazing? You don't take supplements, do you? Not anymore. Used it's, to. Used to. And it's really nice, you know, because when you had to go and spend your hundred bucks at the health food store and buy two bottles of supplements, the money didn't go that far. So um, it's really nice not to buy supplements. If I were sick, I would take herbs, but I haven't been sick since I started this. Hmm. Um, excuse me again for jumping around. Uh, this is an interesting question. I'm not sure if it, let me see if I can get this out right. The natural hygiene philosophy, which I think raw foods is somewhat based mm -hmm. on, I, I love the simplicity of that. It was so attractive to me um, because I got so tired of when anything was wrong with me, going, you know, asking doctors and getting advice and jumping around, feeling like a guinea pig, playing a mm -hmm. guessing game with a lot of people apparently in the know. The simplicity of natural hygiene, I, I loved that. And so that's what I was initially attracted to. Um, and they talk about given, given the right conditions of, of the proper nutrients, uh, that a body will heal itself and take care of problems. Can this go as far as to, as to repair damaged tissues, do you think? Hernias, uh, things that are a little bit drastic like that in this natural hygiene philosophy? Is that possible? I believe that the body wants to be whole and well. And I can't think of many conditions that couldn't be improved upon. Of course, a person's chances would be better if they would use natural medicine or natural hygiene therapy first, you know, rather than after they'd um, had a lot of drugs and a lot of surgery. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it depends on the individual and, of course, a person's desire to be well. And sometimes there's lessons that we get from our illnesses that we need to look at. but. It seems to me that, you know, almost everything I can think of would be improved upon by eating more raw food, whether a person does that 100% or not. Um, and for people that maybe have health conditions where they've, um, you know, somehow damaged their digestive system or they're in a later, you know, stage of their life, for example, that, you know, they have constant nausea, um, then uh, juicing food, pureeing food or uh, fermenting food would make it more digestible because mm. I've had people say I don't have the digestive fire to uh, you know assimilate raw food like I can't really eat carrots or whole they're too you know big or crunchy so they could be pureed so what about food combining is that something you should really be aware of and think about you know some people do food combining I haven't found it that necessary. If I had digestive problems, I probably would pay a lot more attention to it. So I guess I'm on the, you know, let's make it easy and not drive ourselves crazy and make it fun. I haven't found that so-called, you know, bad food combining things have upset me, but, um, you know, I think that a lot of the recipes kind of naturally include good food combining anyways. Mm. Mm. So I can't say that I'm real strict about it. Um, I certainly, you know, know about the rules of food combining, and it certainly makes sense, like, to just have, you know, well, I mean, I guess in some respects, um, I put avocados with fruit and avocados of protein, but uh, it's not something I'm putting too much attention to. So the way to go would be just, just to pay attention to how you feel after you eat something. If you have gas or discomfort, mm -hmm. then maybe that's something you should think about. But I, I agree, yeah. yes.